Welcome to Content with Character, the weekly podcast that'll give you the momentum you need to create content with more ease, clarity, and laughter. I'm your host, content copywriter Emily Aborn, and I'm all about unconventional marketing approaches. I believe in your big ideas, and I'm excited to help you share them in a way that's distinctly you. Summer in general is a high energy time. You might feel spread thin, trying to run in a million different directions, racing far and wide. Goal of this episode is to help you focus the time you're spending on your business going deeper versus wider. Let your business be the place where you lean in when everybody else is leaning out. In this episode, you'll get five things to focus on in your business when everyone's on vacation, plus a little bonus that might just spice things up in your personal world too. Summer is here, and if you are tracking along with me live time here on the Content with Character podcast, the first day of summer was upon us a few days ago, and here in New Hampshire where I live, summer is about the only three months all year where everything in my world and physical being are at peace and one with the universe. I'm mostly joking, but also not joking at all. I love the heat. I love the sunshine. I love the energy and the positivity that summer brings. I love summer. What I don't always love about summer is that along with summer comes clients being a little slower to reply or maybe dragging their feet on projects or not starting projects because they're busy enjoying vacations and family adventures and sunshine and beach days. I also don't always love that summer brings a decrease in podcast listenership because lots of people are with family or busy enjoying vacations or on the beach with a book instead of playing with me here on the Content with Character podcast. A couple of my colleagues recently were sharing with me that summer means their incoming inquiries slow down, uh, their leads, as some folks call it, come to a screeching halt. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Does your business experience a summer slowdown? And if so, what can you do during that time? For a lot of people, the summer slowdown realistically kind of starts in that uh, busy springtime. It's like a spring, summer, early fall slowdown, right? It starts the second that school bell rings for the last time, somewhere maybe around Memorial Day, and then it goes back with a very, very powerful intensity somewhere mid-September, and then goes through until about November when people get all holiday discombobulated all over again. So our businesses for sure do have different seasons, peaks, valleys, etc. Now, candidly, uh, this was a really big problem for me when I first started my business because during the valleys, I had less clients in general, less projects on my plate in general, and the clients that I did have, they were retainers. And what I found happening a lot is that my retainer clients would often pause entirely in the summer, which don't get me started, but summer is not the time to just stop working on your marketing or to stop working on your business for for most of us anyway. Um, But anyway, it has gotten a lot better for me over the years. The more I've been in business, I'm able to like ride the waves more. I'm able to see those times before they happen and use them to uh, focus on some different things. So I will say that no matter whether you're uh, business to consumer or business to business or direct to consumer, It happens a lot. Uh, You may just find that people don't have the same priorities all year long, whether that be the summer months or the holiday months or whenever it may be for your business. Um, Alternatively, some people self-impose a summer slowdown and it is intentional. So maybe that means you are working less hours or you're taking on less client projects or freeing yourself up as a business owner to have more time flexibility so that you can enjoy those sweet, sweet beachy days while they last. Either way, whichever camp you're in or if you're somewhere in between, the goal of this episode is to help you take advantage of and make the most of these kind of times by focusing on impact while everybody else is on vacation or maybe while you're on vacation. So what I really want to do is just offer you some ideas that make it so you're not sacrificing your own fun and leisure That's not fun. There's no joy in that. Uh, But also that you're really uh, 
deepening your message and and focusing on the things that matter most. So real quick, in case this is your first time listening or maybe your second time listening and you forgot who I was the first time, I wanted to introduce myself. And also this week, I want to play our voicemail of the week. And then we'll get into all of the things to do while people or you are on vacation. I love the current issue of Content with Character on comparisons. It was wonderful. I tried to text you, but that button wasn't working. Maybe it only works from my phone. I don't know. Anyway, I'm using the other option. Great episode. And I am next going to send it to a friend and encourage her to subscribe. Thank you, dear listener, for your awesome voicemail. So if you are like, oh my gosh, what was that? How do I do that? You can also send me a voicemail. And I think that the issue with maybe not being able to click the link was that maybe it wasn't in the Apple Podcast app. I don't know. I don't know how all the apps work. Um, But if you go to the show notes, there is a link that says leave me a voicemail and hopefully you can click it. Um, But if you get stuck, just let me know. And you can also text me. It's very exciting. There's lots of different ways to get involved. And I also just want to say thank you so much for passing the episode along. A, that means the world to me. And B, that is how you're going to help me spread the word about this podcast. So uh, in case you are unaware, uh, I'm Emily Aborn. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm also a copywriter, which means that I do blogs, website copy, brand messaging guides, strategy sessions, and in general, things that help small business owners to find and share their voice and also their personality with the world. I'm also a speaker and a workshop presenter. And if I do say so myself, I'm a very fun podcast guest. I like to give your listeners all the tools, everything I possibly know, uh, to empower them to set set things into motion right away. So without further ado, let's get into the topic at hand. Let's get into the things you can do during a summer slowdown in your business to maximize the season, both in what you're working on, but also the fun you're having outside of working hours. And I just want to start by laying the foundation of this. When everyone else is leaning out, lean in. Now, this is like my general rule of thumb in life. I'm always sort of the rebel in this way. And I, yes, I'm encouraging you to be a rebel too. But if something is a trend or everybody's doing it or everybody likes it, chances are I'm not going to do it. Um, Now, in this instance, I'm not just being contrary when everybody else is off having their fun. I really do stand by this. I love using the time the quieter times to kind of tinker away at some of those big, big things and take action steps on some of my some of my goals that I don't get to work on during the busier seasons. So I always add in, of course, like downtime and relaxation for myself as well. But I love kind of taking this quieter time to work on some of those big picture things. Um, I am not the person, and if you are, uh, yay you, I'm glad you're lucky enough to do this, but I am not the person who takes an entire summer off. I cannot afford to take an entire summer off and disconnect from my business entirely. I cannot afford to not have clients. Um, So I like to be able to use downtime and quiet time to keep up momentum in my business so that when things pick up again, um, I have like some really good pieces in place. Now, If you are lucky enough, like I said, to be able to take the entire summer off or months and months at a time off, uh, by all means, maybe you just go ahead and lean out right along with the rest of them. But if you are not, if you're like me, and maybe you're keeping the upstairs lights on in the house while your spouse is responsible for the downstairs lights, if you need to keep earning a living, maybe you use this time to lean in when everybody else is leaning out. So, as a, as a tangible example, when my clients are inevitably taking longer to reply to things right now, when loose ends are loose for a little longer than I feel comfortable with, um, I try to embrace it to go a little bit deeper on things that maybe don't get my full attention during other times of the year. I work on making progress and keeping momentum during what can otherwise be a very frustrating time. So I would encourage you to do the same. Try to embrace a slowdown as an opportunity to reflect, reconnect, deepen, and enjoy creating a pace in your business that supports you, not just during this time, but 
the whole year round. Summer is in general a very, very high energy time. And in our personal lives, we often feel very spread thin, right? We're like trying to run in a million different directions, racing far and wide. And so I wanted to create an episode that helps you to focus the time that you're working on your business not to be that. I want the time that you focus on your business to be going deeper versus wider and have your business be the place where you lean in when maybe everybody else is leaning out. So what how we do this is we focus on what matters most to you to accomplish, to share, to do, the work you like to do and who you like to work with and go all in on those things. And I came up with like five really specific things you can do and then uh, a bonus one for fun. So number one is um, be intentional with your time. This is both in your business and outside of your business, but spending your time when you are working uh, really wisely so that you can actually be more present in your life. So you can be more spontaneous, right? So whether you're working or playing, you want to be where you are and being intentional with your time helps you be there. This might mean you agree to working with fewer clients or you don't say yes to all the networking calls that you usually do. Uh, You attend fewer events, you unsubscribe from things, you scroll social media less, you give in to fewer distractions overall so that your time working can be more impactful. And maybe you're even more definitive or more clear on what you're spending your time on. If you listen to my episode on my little time tracking experiment that I did back in May, you'll hear uh, how I took stock for a week of exactly where my time was going so I could establish really, really clear time boundaries for myself in my business. And I will say I did that at just the right time because it took me about two, like maybe even three weeks to really get on track with where I wanted to be with how I was using my time. And once I did... I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. I was cruising and I had a stronger filter for being able to know what to say yes to and also what to turn down because I know this. I know that I want to be present and uh, be show up where I say I'm going to show up. I don't want my time to just be up for grabs anytime and always because I just end up scattered and with a plate that I can, I can barely carry because it's too full. Being overly busy, not really what I want for my life. It's not that interesting. Uh, I, I watch friends who are just way too busy and everything is squeezed in here, there, and everywhere. And it tends to feel to me like a little bit disconnected when I'm spending time with them. And I will say I'm guilty of this. And in fact, just last week, Um, I hopped onto a co-working session with two of my good friends and I was very overwhelmed. I had a lot I had packed into a day and I shouldn't have added that extra piece in my day or committed to doing this because I was stopping my focus on tasks and trying to kind of be like a social in the middle of all of the things I had put on my plate. And I was not proud of how I showed up that day. I was not present. Um, and so I have to remember that moving forward. And so that I would encourage you in that too. Be intentional with your time this summer so that you can be fully present. So you can enjoy the time you're not working as well as the time that you are working, right? But the time that you're not working, being present and showing up with your friends, your family, on vacation, whatever else you decide to do. And that's number one, be intentional with your time. Number two is to hone in and refine rather than painting broad strokes or throwing spaghetti at the wall, uh, especially with your content and your your marketing. Instead of asking or, or sorry, instead of adding a bunch of new stuff, what if you decided to go deeper and hone in on what you're already doing? deeper on what's working, Uh, get more clear on what your themes are in your business and setting the, the foundations of your business. So for example, I'm using the summer months to talk on things on the podcast that were maybe like a little scarier to put out there or like some real thoughts and opinions I have. Like, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of focusing it on what is working, but going deeper on those things. And right now, focusing a little bit less on the how to's and like a little making this just like a little bit more exchange of deeper ideas and experiences. I will say this. 
I do think that people's attention spans tend to get shorter during these various busy seasons. And so now it's like more important than ever to go deeper and uh, be refined in what you're sharing, like speaking really clearly and intentionally. And also remembering that the people who are still listening, they are going to absolutely love that. So speak to those people, uh, the people who are, whose attention you still have versus trying to cast this wide net or, or you know, capture the attention of those who aren't. Um, also, another way to go like deeper when, or sorry, to hone in and kind of like refine things is look at your website messaging. Is there a place where that needs to be more honed in and refined? I know that personally, that's something I want to work on. Um, an idea came to me recently and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to write this. This is really what gets to the heart of who I am, what I do and how I help and who I work with. So that's something I want to keep working on going deeper with until it's like polished and then I'll, then I'll implement it. So number two is hone in and refine. And I know a lot of people would say that kind of thing for winter. And that's why I said, when they lean out, you lean in. Uh, Okay, number three is reconnect and build on relationships. Just like number two, reconnecting and building on is all about deepening things that already exist. Relationships you've already started investing in. Not that I don't want you to make any new friends or connections, that's not what I'm saying, but what if instead of trying to meet tons and tons of new people, you focus on the people in front of you. You, instead of going here, there, and everywhere, you reconnect with that one fabulous collaborator who you made magic with, but you haven't worked with since. What if you started forming a deep, intimate, cozy knit mini mastermind of people you want to share ideas and resources with, or you dedicated time to build on and nurture relationships that you want to foster? It might be collaborators, it might be clients, it might be colleagues, uh, or just connections. Even I would say friends and family fit the bill. So build on those foundations that you've already laid, make them stronger. Number four, share what you have not yet dared to share. Uh, Where have you been holding yourself back and maybe a little too scared to speak up and share? Or what have you not yet said and expressed? What are you keeping locked away out of fear or just uh, I'm not ready to share that yet? What have you been hesitant to just go for? Maybe you can mentally like turn down the fear a little bit because I don't know, let's just hypothetically say that less people are watching and listening, even if that's not the case. But maybe there's a way you can just kind of like, all right, I'm just going to dip my toes in the summer and see how it feels and take a baby step. Harness those summer vibes and carpe diem, dive in. Uh, I, I am daring you to try it, daring you to share what you have not dared to share. Uh, number five is to just think outside um, trends and tactics. I see a lot of people do this during busy seasons. They use autopilot, and that usually means tactics or uh, shiny objects, basically, or trends to um, ride the waves and like avoid sharing anything real. But I would say, please don't do this. Please do not just lean on trends or uh, marketing tactics or ploys or shiny objects to get you through. Lots of people try to do this, and I think it's kind of a a little bit of a, it's doing a disservice. It's a little bit of a cop-out for showing up, and people do not want that. They want real, genuine connections no matter the time of year. Even if your people seem like they're taking a pause right now, they still want real, genuine, honest you. Uh, So keep showing up consistently, intentionally, authentically as you, and focus on what matters most. If you do... I can almost guarantee, I cannot guarantee this, but I can almost guarantee the business won't just bounce back to normal at the end of the summer. It will come back even better than before. And I know I told you I was going to give you five ideas and then a bonus. So let's wrap up. Let's sum up the five and then we'll get into that extra one. Okay. And that's really going to be like a little bit more in your personal life. So number one is be intentional with your time. Number two, hone in and refine. Number three, reconnect and build on relationships. Number four, share what you have not yet dared to share. Uh, Number five, think outside those trends and tactics. 
And the bonus, number six, this will help you if you're just like itching and dying to create something new, okay? It is summer after all. And so if you just cannot, if you're like that person that's like, I just cannot not put something new out there or take on something new and exciting, what if you start doing some life experiments? Now, I'm doing these in my personal life um, instead of my business world, but they're just kind of my area to experiment my opportunity to like explore areas that I've never explored before. So I would encourage you to do the same, like take time to conduct small little experiments throughout your life. You can try things in a very small way at first. And then if you decide you like it, or this is like got a stick, you can personalize it more, customize it more, uh, create more experiences, bring it into your work if you want. So I'll give you some examples. Um, I just recently started a Substack, which is my container for my experiments. It's an experiment within, it's experiments within an experiment. Um, and so I'll include the link to that in the show notes. But basically on this platform, I try something new and I report back as to how it went. So some of the things I've experimented with, I mean, these are all like personal things. I've experimented with diversifying the foods that I eat or uh, trying a new work workout class or attending a book club. Um, and my experiments keep on coming. I do a new one every single week. So if you're like, hmm, I'm intrigued and I need to be inspired in some experiments I can do for myself, check that out. The link, like I said, is in the show notes. But my point to you, my challenge to you is if you're just dying to create something new, why don't you use your your personal time, you're not working, you're not in your business, uh, to experiment and take yourself a little less seriously in that area of your life. Summer is a great time to play around, experiment, find out, and uh, I would encourage you to give that a give that a whirl, so to speak. So I hope this episode kind of helped you think of the summer quote unquote slump a little bit differently. And I hope you'll join me next week because next week we're going to be answering a listener question. And that is, can marketing and content creation actually be fun? Is that even possible? And if it's not, does that mean that you're doing something wrong? So I can't wait. I know you can't wait. And I will chat with you then. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Content with Character. If you loved the episode, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast, rate, review, and share it with someone else you know it could help. For more content and visibility tips, visit my blog at emilyaborn.com. And be sure to connect with me on Instagram at emilyaborn. I'd love to hear how this inspired you to take action.